we have seen the permutations and combinations of n objects taken r at a time. In this module, we will discuss some theorems and results on combinations. The first theorem states the relation between the permutations and combinations of the n objects taken r at a time. Suppose there are n objects and we have r places to be filled by taking r objects at a time. The number of permutations is npr. Here, we can see that the process is of two events. The first event is selecting r objects from the given n objects. The second event is arranging these r objects in r places. The first event of selecting r objects can be achieved in NCR ways. The second event of arranging R items in R places can be done in R factorial ways. Using the multiplication rule, the whole process is equal to NCR multiplied by R factorial. Therefore, NPR is equivalent to NCR multiplied by R factorial. Based upon the theorem, we can obtain a few results. The formula for NCR can be written as shown. To arrive at this formula, we use the relation that we just saw. We will divide both the sides of the relation by R factorial. By substituting the formula for NPR, we get the formula for NCR. Using this formula, we can prove that NC0 is equal to 1. This can be easily verified by substituting the values. Another result that we can verify using the formula is NC N minus R is equal to NCR. Let's verify the result by using the formula on the left-hand side. We can see that this is NCR indeed. Another result we can verify using the formula is NCN is equal to 1. Using the previous result, 3, we have NCN is equal to NC N minus N. This implies NCN is equal to 1. One of the important results is if NCA is equal to NCB. Then A is equal to B or N is equal to A plus B. Given NCA is equal to NCB. Obviously, this relation holds true when A is equal to B. Next, we will consider the case where A is not equal to B. Without loss of generality, let's take A is lesser than B. We use the formula for combinations on both the sides. The factorials can be expanded as shown on both the sides. The first term on the left-hand side is expanded using the fact that A is less than B. The second term on the right-hand side is also expanded in a similar way. Since either side is the product of B minus A consecutive positive integers, we have N minus A is equal to B. Simplifying, we get the result.
In this module, you will learn to find the general and the middle terms of a binomial expansion. Let's recall the binomial theorem. The expansion of a binomial x plus y with a positive integral index n is equal to nc0 x raised to the power n plus nc1 x raised to the power n minus 1 into y plus and so on. The last term being ncn y raised to the power n. The first term in the expansion is nc0 into x raised to the power n. The second term is nc1 into x raised to the power n minus 1 into y and so on. Following the same pattern, any required term in the expansion can be obtained. The seventh term is nc6 into x raised to the power of n minus 6 into y raised to the power of 6. Likewise, the r plus 1th term is ncr into x raised to the power of n minus r into y raised to the power of r. This is known as the general term of the expansion. With the help of this formula, you will be able to find any term in the expansion. Let us now let us now find the middle term in the expansion of a binomial. Let's first get the concept of middle term clear. If the number of terms in the expansion is odd, then there will be one middle term. If the number of terms in the expansion is even, then there will be two middle terms. Thus, the number of middle terms in an expansion depends upon the index of the binomial. When the index of a binomial is n, there will be n plus 1 terms in the expansion. If n is even, then n plus 1 is odd. That is, the number of terms in the expansion is odd. In this case, there will be only one middle term which is the n upon 2 plus 1th term. For example, if the index is 6, then the number of terms in the expansion is 7, and the middle term is the 4th term. If n is odd, n plus 1 is even. That is, the number of terms in the expansion is n plus 1. In this case, the expansion will have two middle terms. The two middle terms are n plus 1 upon tooth term and n plus 1 upon 2 plus 1th term. For example, if the index is 5, then there will be 6 terms in the expansion and the middle terms will be the third and the fourth terms. Now, now, let us understand what is a term independent of x or a constant term in the expansion of a binomial. In a binomial expansion, a term that has no variable in it is known as a term independent of x or a constant term. In the expansion of x plus 1 upon x whole square, the second term is a constant with no variables in it. Here, 2 is the term independent of x or the constant term of the given expansion.
In the previous module, you learned the expansion of a binomial raised to any positive integral index using Pascal's triangle. For example, the expansion of x plus y whole raised to the power of n is as shown. In this module, let us look at some special cases of binomial expansion. Let's begin with the first case when x is equal to a and y is equal to minus b. Substituting the values of x and y in equation 1 and then simplifying, we get the expansion as shown. Denote this by equation 2. Using this expansion, let us expand 2x minus y whole raised to the power of 4. By using the binomial expansion of a minus b whole raised to the power n, we get the expansion as shown. Substituting the values of the binomial coefficients and then simplifying, we get the expansion as 16x raised to the power 4 minus 32 x raised to the power 3 into y plus 24 x square into y square minus 8 x into y raised to the power 3 plus y raised to the power 4. Let us consider another case now. Consider the binomial expansion of x plus y whole raised to the power n. When x is equal to 1, the binomial is 1 plus y whole raised to the power of n. This can be simplified further to get the expression shown here. Further, when y is also equal to 1, the expression is as shown. This is the simplified form. This is a formula to find the sum of the coefficients of a binomial expansion. Let us understand one more case of binomial expansion. Recall the expansion of 1 plus x whole raised to the power of n. Denote this by equation 3. When x is equal to minus y, equation 3 can be written as shown. The simplified form of the expansion is shown here. Now, when y is equal to 1, we get 1 minus 1 whole raised to the power n is equal to nc0 minus nc1 plus nc2 minus nc3 and so on up to minus 1 whole raised to the power n into ncn. nc0 minus nc1 plus nc2 minus nc3 and so on plus minus 1 raised to the power of n into ncn is equal to 0. By transposing all negative terms to the other side of the equation, we get nc0 plus nc2 plus nc4 plus and so on is equal to nc1 plus nc3 plus nc5 and so on. This implies that the sum of the coefficients of the odd numbered terms of the expansion is equal to the sum of the coefficients of its even numbered terms.